Hi guys, we are back with part 2 of the tutorial. Make Altium libraries like a pro. In part 1, we learnt about integrated libraries. How we can add schematic and PCB library files to integrated library. And different methods to create schematic symbols quickly. So now in this tutorial, we will learn three different methods to create footprints. Just like we did for symbols. We will discuss the best method first, which is using IPC compliant footprint wizard to create the footprints. Then we will look at another tool called component wizard and compare it with the first method. Last, we will discuss the manual method, which is least recommended among the three. Let us now look at method 1 for creating the footprints, which is using IPC compliant footprint wizard. This is a symbol that we created in part 1. Now to create the footprints, just double click on the PCB library file. You can also navigate from the tabs on the top. To create any footprint, you would need certain dimensions that can be extracted out of the datasheet. This is the datasheet of atmega 328p and as you can see all the dimensions are indicated here. The values for each dimension is mentioned in the box. The box has minimum, nominal and maximum values. The footprint that we are going to create is tqfp. Now to create the footprints just click on tools and select IPC compliant footprint wizard. The wizard will open like this. Just click on next. Now we have to select the right component type here. As you can see there are different packages but we need to select the right one. From the datasheet we know that we will be creating TQFP package which is thin quad flat pack. And in the wizard we can select PQFP which is plastic quad flat pack. Select it and click on next. Now you just have to find out the values of different dimensions from the datasheet and put them in the wizard. As you can see we need the dimension for D and E. But if you go to the datasheet you will find out the D is E and E is actually D. So you have to be very careful about these references. Sometimes they would match, sometimes they would not. Let's look at the value of D. Minimum is 8.75, maximum is 9.25. Which is exactly what we have entered in the wizard. Now the value for E which is same as that of D in our case. And the same has been entered. Now for A, which is actually the component height, if you look at the data sheet, in there also it is mentioned as A. And the maximum value is 1.20. The same has been entered. Now for A1, which is the minimum standoff height, the value is 0.15. After that we have to select the position of first pin. Is it on the side D or at the center of E? From the data sheet we know it is on the top left corner. So we'll select side of D and press next. In this window we will enter pin related dimensions. Like the width of the pin which is indicated as B. The length of the pin which is indicated as L pitch between the pins, body width range indicated as E1 and D1 and finally the number of pins which is 8 in our case both sides. The maximum minimum values for all the dimensions are there in the datasheet. Just copy the values from there 
and enter in the wizard. Once you are ready, press next. If your component requires a thermal pad, you can enter the dimensions here. But the component that we are making doesn't require a thermal pad. So we will keep it unchecked and press next. In this window you can enter the values for heel spacing. As you can see it is automatically calculated but you can change the values if you have some specific requirements. Once you are done press next. Now you have to enter the values for the solder fillers which means how much the pad should be extended towards the toe of the lead and towards the heel and also towards the side. As you can see it is automatically calculated but you can change the values if you want. Once you are ready press next. Now we will enter the component related tolerances. These ranges may be adjusted based upon experience from different suppliers. You can change the values like this or if you would like to keep the calculated tolerances just keep it checked and press next. Here we can add IPC related tolerances like fabrication tolerance which depends on how accurate your PCB manufacturer is or placement tolerance that depends on how accurate is your assembler. We can also add courtyard access here which depends on the density of the board. You can also keep the automatically calculated values and press next. These are the final footprint dimensions calculated by the system. You can fine tune them if you want to, but normally they are perfect. You can also select between the rectangular and the round type pads. Once you are ready just press next. You can put the dimensions for silk screen here. 0.2 mm line width is ok and I will go by the calculated values. Here we can add all the mechanical information. Say for example we can choose if we need the courtyard on the component or not. And if needed we can select between the automatically calculated values or we can add custom values. We can also indicate on which layer the courtyard should appear. Similarly for assembly information and component body information we can either add custom values or can choose the automatically calculated values. Press next when you are ready. This is the last step. We just need to give a name and description to the footprint. I normally just check uncheck the suggested value block and I get a pretty decent name here. You can change the name as you would like. Just click there and type in whatever you need. Once you are happy with the name and description just click next. Just click on the radio button for current PCB lib file. This will add the footprint that we are creating to the PCB library file that we created in part 1 of the tutorial. Just click on next and then finish. There you go, our footprint is ready. Now that you have seen method 1 for creating the footprints, you must have realized that it is very easy to create accurate footprints using this wizard. You just have to find out the right information from the data sheet and put them in the wizard. And the wizard will create an accurate footprint for you. Let us now look at method 2 also. This method will use component wizard to create the footprints. Here is method 2 for creating the footprints. Just click on tools and select component wizard. In the component wizard press next. Select the units as metric and pattern type as quad packs and click on next. Give the sizes for the pad. In our case it is 0.55 mm and 1.5 mm. Press next. Select if you want a rounded or rectangular pad for pin number 1. Give dimension for the silk screen, 0.2 is ok. 
here you need to give some other dimension for the page layout the pitch would be 0.8 mm and this dimension would be uh, 1.3 press next select the position of pin number 1 and how you want to do the naming select number of pins on each side give a proper name to the footprint and press next click finish there you go method 2 is very fast to create the footprints it requires you to enter minimal information a lot of people start with method 2 when they are creating the footprints and once they are done they add other required information like courtyard assembly information etc but if you want to do everything automatically as we did in method 1 ipc wizard is the thing for you Let us now quickly look at method 3 for creating the footprints. We will first make the silk screen block. For that you need to set the grid to 1 mm because you know that the silk screen block is 7 mm from the data sheet. So select the right layer which is top overlay and then select the line and start drawing a block. For 7 mm you just need to count 7 blocks and turn to the right. complete the block like this once you are done we can start adding the paths for that again we need to change the grid to 0.8 mm because the pitch of the pad is 0.8 mm that we know from the data sheet you can select the pad but no before that you have to select the right layer which is top layer in our case because we are making an SMD pad. Select the pad and press tab before placing it to edit the properties. We need a rectangular pad and the dimension would be 0.55 mm and 1.5 mm. Okay. The orientation we need is 90 degrees. Okay. Next we need to set the pen, pin designator which is 1 and the layer on which the pad would be placed. This is the top layer in our case. Okay. Rest of the things are okay and you can press okay now. Now you can start placing the pads one by one with left click of the mouse. Now for the next side either you can change the rotation or just press space bar like this. Press space for the other side. Space bar again like this. Six, seven, and eight. Okay. So all the pads are placed. Now we can add the indication for pin number one. We can use the full arc for that but before that we have to select the right layer which is top overlay then select the full arc and place it uh, it is very big as you can see because it is snapping to the grid just change the grid to some smaller value 
and then you can edit it there you go and the footprint is ready now that you have seen all the methods for creating footprints you can decide for yourself which one suits you better method 3 is little time consuming plus there is high chances of introducing some errors while creating footprints once our footprint is ready we just need to connect it to the symbol that we created in part 1 of the video it is extremely easy to connect the footprint and symbol in all game designer this is the symbol that we created in part 1 of the video and we want to connect this symbol now to the footprint that we have created just click here and select footprint click on browse and choose the footprint that you want to connect let us select the one that we created using IPC wizard you can see the 3d body of the component here just press ok and the component will appear like this press ok there you go the footprint is connected to the symbol This is the final step for creating the integrated library which is compiling the integrated library that we have created. Whenever you make any changes to this library, do remember to recompile it again. Let us now see how to compile this library. To compile, just right click on the integrated library and select compile integrated library. Once done, the system will compile the library and show up the library panel once done. This completes the procedure for creating integrated libraries. That is everything about Altium libraries. I hope you liked the video. Do subscribe to our channel if you liked it. Thanks for watching.